But we begin tonight with a game that literally just went final. Boo Booey with a game winner. The Northwestern Wildcats beat Indiana 64 to 62. Booey, who has stuck the course with Northwestern basketball, comes up as the hero. And the Cats are in second place by themselves in the Big Ten. Chris Mack, your instant reaction to a wild one in Evanston. Wild one. John, the uh, the tale of two halves, you know, it obviously just disappointing for Indiana, you know, after the, their second half comeback, their charge, be able to tie it up there right at the end, and, and Northwestern gets the last shot with Boo Booey. I mean, I thought their, their prescription in the first half for Trace Jackson Davis, doubling him immediately, um, it wasn't as if he was having a bad game. He, he couldn't get a shot off. And um, they, they sort of found their groove in the second half. We talked off air, John, some of the passes that he made, uh, obviously the threes and the jump shots that Indiana hit to begin the second half and just sort of stormed back to within eight or ten, sort of lended you the idea that it was going to be a game. But <laughs> give Northwestern credit. So many times when a team just comes roaring back, you know, you can't find the confidence to finish the job, and, and they certainly did. Man, that, that game was wild. What a week for Northwestern, huh? Huge. You know what's impressive, Chris, is what you just said, the res their response. Like, when you Northwestern, you know, obviously, this is their fourth ranked win or fourth win over a ranked opponent, which is a program record. Yep. And uh, for them to respond like they've been there before tonight, I mean, you've had really good teams and really big leads and teams come – Charging back, you you have to have some resolve. Your players got to have some confidence to respond to the way they did to hold off the run and, and finish the job. So I hey, credit to Indiana for getting back in the game. But, I, I mean, Northwestern, they believe they're supposed to win these games now. It's a hard place to play all of a sudden. You know, I mean, you go back to Saturday's or Sunday's game against Purdue, and, you know, Purdue, I, I felt like, really had that game in the bag the entire way until the last four minutes. And then tonight the script is completely flipped, you know, and, and, you know, I, I just think that, you know, Indiana was on the ropes the entire first half it looked like it wasn't even going to be a game. And then for them to have the wherewithal to, to come all the way back, tie the, tie the basketball game up, but Northwestern still win. It has an amazing win for them. So here's the thing. You guys have been in the, business you've been in the industry and you know when pundits are talking about teams and oh I'm still betting on them in March and all this stuff and Mac I know I know all too well uh when we've been talking during the season and you were coaching you'd say yeah but this is what the record really is here's the deal fellas Northwestern's 19 and 7 yep. they've won seven of their last nine they've won four in a row Illinois lost to Penn State last night not saying it's easy to play Penn State. I'm not suggesting that at all. But Northwestern's beaten Purdue, and they've beaten Indiana in a span of four nights. Yeah. The Northwestern Wildcats are not only in second place in the Big Ten, but right now they're the second best team in the Big Ten, bar none. No, they're good, John. That's their, I think that's their seventh quad one victory on the season. Like let's not let's stop acting like they're like they're good. <laughs> yeah, and, and you know what? Credit to Credit to the administration for staying with Chris Collins, you know, through post COVID and, and, and continuing to believe, obviously, I mean, it, it, everybody has to be uh, together and connected on uh, here's how we're going to do it. And, and, and believing it's going to work, um, you know, even though he had a couple a down year or two. I'll tell you what, I just, I really like watching Northwestern play. They, uh, they run really good stuff. You know, I think that their players make the right play on the offensive end. Obviously, Boo Booey, uh, you know, big time confidence in, in big moments. That shot at the end, you know, he, he got knocked off a little bit off balance. And for him to be able to, again, hit a four foot floater to win the game after they had given up that, you know, lead, that's not an easy thing to do. And, you know, Val, you've been there before, man. You're that coach. And then all of a sudden that game goes to overtime. And, you know, you've lost that lead. Sort of hard to get your players yeah. to believe in, hey, we're, we're fine kind of thing because they were out on the floor and, and felt what they just felt. So, uh, again, said it a, a ton, but continue to say it. What a, what a night for Northwestern. Yeah. What a great couple games. Yeah, they were up 20. 
give give credit to Chris Lowry, Mac. You you, I don't know if you ever did you ever coach yep. against Chris in Southern Illinois. I mean, yep. heck of a ball coach. He's come in and 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 Chris Collins has allowed him to take over their defense and like they are active, they are physical. You know, their post traps and yep. and what they did against Purdue, what they did tonight against Tra Trace Jackson Davis. Like CeeLo, CeeLo is, you know, Chris has kind of given them the defense. Yeah. I know he's been a disciple of Bruce Weber and he's had that for it, but like they are guarding their tails off. You know, along those lines here, uh, a, a thought that comes to mind. Mac, I'll start with you on this. How do you as a head coach stay true to who you are while also recognizing things that maybe you could be better at and surrounding yourself with people that could enhance those areas. Yeah. I mean, I, I think that one, one of the best pieces of advice that I got when, uh, when I first became a head coach uh, was from a mentor of mine when I was an assistant coach at Wake Forest and he's very, very involved in the program. He said, you know, and he's a CEO and the best CEOs he said, uh, aren't the smartest people in the room. You know, they don't try to be, you know, they try to surround themselves with, you know, people that compliment them, uh, people that, that are stronger in certain areas. And, you know, Val mentioned it before, Chris Lowry, um, was a hell of a coach, specifically on the defensive end. I remember some of those Missouri Valley games where they'd hold teams to 35 and 38 points. I mean, it, it was ferocious. And he, Honestly, that I think the end of his coaching career as a head coach there at Southern Illinois was tough because he had a mass exodus of players. But man, when he had his full complement of guys, uh, no nobody was better than him on the defensive end, and and you can see that with Northwestern, they're a completely different defensive team. But I, I you know, you credit Chris Collins. I mean, he we all want to win as head coaches, and I don't really care who gets the credit, just as you always preach to your team. You know, why shouldn't that be part of your staff? And so a uh, great win for him.